Hey folks, Samantha Robertson here from the Treehouse, joined by my colleague Stephen Grimm. Hello! And we are super excited today to be talking to you about a couple of games that we've been working on for a few months, and we're finally allowed to talk about them. Finally! It's uh, two games that we've been working on with Gung Ho, uh, Puzzle & Dragon Z, and Puzzle & Dragon Super Mario Brothers Edition. And to get us started, we're going to hop into the Super Mario Brothers yeah, Edition and show that off. Yeah, it's a great place for people new to the Puzzle & Dragons franchise to begin with this game. It's also a great place for people who know the Puzzle & Dragons series to uh, uh, see their beloved series merged with uh, Mario. Yeah. So we'll start there with a Perfect. tour of the Mushroom Kingdom. And I think what's really cool here is these two games are coming out together in one package, but they're completely full freestanding experiences. Neither one of them is a reskin of a game. They take a basic concept and they really develop it in, in cool different directions. So you're gonna get a lot of hours of gameplay. A I'm lot, still not a done lot of hours of gameplay. Realm. It's crazy <laughs> how much gameplay is in this. And we're going to be continuing one of the games you've been working on. So we've got a team ready to jump in here. So uh, it's a Mario adventure. So we're going across the Mario, uh, across the Mushroom Kingdom to rescue Peach from Bowser. But the way you're battling across the Mushroom Kingdom is unlike ever before. One big thing is you're actually recruiting Bowser's baddies to actually work for you on your teams. And that's the first thing we want to show is team building, because uh, that's a really crucial concept for Puzzle and Dragons. Yeah, the strategy element is so important. If you don't think about who you're taking into these courses, it's going to be really hard to You'll, clear them. You could fail out pretty quickly if you don't construct the right team with the right teammates. So speaking of what's going to be in a course, here we've got some really helpful information. First off, it's a normal course. We've got five different elements plus heart orbs, which means we're going to be able to heal and we're going to be able to use all of the different elements that are going to be at our disposal. Uh, we can also see some items that maybe we're going to run into and the enemies. And, and looking at these, it's overwhelmingly fire. It's a big fire dungeon. That's probably one of the, the biggest things that we can see at a glance here. It's like, how, what do you fight fire with? We'll stack the team with a bunch of water stuff. So um, let's talk about what makes up a team in this game, which is a little bit different than how things are done in, in uh, the typical Puzzle and Dragons fashion. In this one, only certain, first thing you do is you pick your leader. But only We've got certain. Options here. Yeah, those are your options. It's basically it's Mario and Luigi are the only ones who can lead your team. It's a spin from the standard Puzzle and Dragons where any monsters can staff your leader position. But only Mario and Luigi, which is or pretty Boo fitting. Mario. Boo Mario, Raccoon, Raccoon Mario. Mario. Every one of these <laughs> is treated as a separate character that levels up and has his own unique powers, his own unique skill and leader skill. Now the leader skill is the most crucial thing to think about when building a team. The leader skill is one that is passively distributed to the whole team if it applies. So we're going into a fire dungeon, so who else better to take us in than... Ice Mario. Mario. Right. Yeah, so his leader skill is Ice Power, which basically raises the attack stat and the recovery healing stat of all of your water team members. We'll show how that plays out as we go in the dungeon. I'm just gonna take a quick pass over our allies. You staff the rest of your team of exclusively awesome. with baddies. So, uh, right, and we'll explain why we chose them specifically as we go into this, into this course. But the other thing you do just before going into a course is adding a helper on the backside. Here we go. Your helper can be the other brother in any of his forms or other special guests that show up the further you play in the adventure. So a lot of toads for now, because we're just in world Three. I don't think we're allowed to talk about it in too much detail, but there are a lot of familiar faces, shall we say, there that will some, turn up in the helper pool. Some familiar friends, as well as some other surprises mm -hmm. that you would never think would be on your team. So That's all we we'll want to go that. with Ice Luigi. For Ice this one, right? Luigi, yeah. Okay. And if we advance to the next screen, you'll be able to see the leader skill and the helper skill, which is really the leader skill of the other brother in a helper position. Yeah. Those two leader skills really make or break your team. The top one raises the attack and recovery of all water team members by 1.5. The bottom one raises the attack again by 1.5. 1.5 times 1.5 is 2.25, so it essentially doubles the attack stat of your water team members and the HP as well. So Sorry to really nicely. get super excited about <laughs> statistics there, but that's actually a big part of how to build teams, taking advantage of the statistical advantages. Well, I know when you're working on this, like you had to do a lot of the writing for the skill stuff, so getting into statistics was really important to make you know, sure all the math You know, getting the battle works. system right when localizing a game is just such a tricky thing to do, but it's there worth it. Go. So we'll talk about some orbs. of the battle basics if uh, for people who aren't familiar with Puzzle and Dragons. Ooh, Basically, good. what Sam is doing is, it's this game is unlike a lot of match three style games. We might just switch the position of two orbs on the screen. On this one, we're really referring to this one as a drag and match gameplay style. 
Whereas Sam is battling monsters, oh. um, she's dragging one orb through the whole field creating combos. But let's take a moment to talk about branching paths. I need paths. to stop you to ask where I should right. want me to go. <laughs> let's turn uh, left here. All right. And the way you choose uh, the path that a branching path is to, is to match more orbs of that color than the other one. Which can which be painfully difficult depending on what's tricky, on the field. Especially when you clear some orbs and more drop in and randomly create a match of the other color. Super irritating. So I'm going to target the spiny because I really don't want him to get to the point where he's going to be attacking me. As you play through these levels, you really come to understand what each of these Bowser baddies are able to do. Now spiny has a super high defense attacks only every several turns, but he has a really, really high attack when he attacks. Almost, it's pretty much a one-hit KO if he reaches yeah, his attack. I really want to take care of him before he actually gets to him. that point. But we just got a baddie block. Baddie so block. So it's a good point uh, to stop and chat about those. Right. Sometimes when you defeat monsters, sometimes a baddie will drop a baddie block, which is the result of a spell gone wrong that comic uh, cast at the very beginning of the game. Some Bowser baddies get trapped in baddie blocks. You discover them on the courses as you battle monsters. That adds that baddie to your team for future use. But we'll collect them all at the end. If I was stuck inside a box and somebody I'm let sides. me out, I would join forces with them and fight my boss yep. as well. Trading it feels sides. like it's it's only right yeah. to pay back the favor. And uh, let's see if I can get this. So some of the things about the reason we out. built this team, um, all of those allies in the middle of the team, the Bowser baddies, they have skills that are slowly powering up, turn after turn, where we're creating successful orb matches. And Sam, once you finish this guy off, if you can pop into the skill screen just for a moment to oh, show sure. it that all these skills are a few turns oh, away from powering up. Oh, let's finish him off first. You want to finish okay. him off first? Oh, okay, I'll just, let's see here. Try to make it quick and painless. That'll do it. He won't even know, it's just <laughs> a peaceful sleep. Nice. There we go. All right. Now so we'll go to the we'll go to the next uh, screen, and then we can take a quick look at the skills that have been powering up. Every time you complete orb matches, it's advancing all of these counters on every single one of these skills by one turn. And so, Ice Ball Mario's Ice Ball skills six turns away from being activated. Piranha Drain four turns away. That will be super useful, hopefully, by the time we get to the boss. All I have to do is survive that long, and I need more now to open light orbs. Up the question mark blocks, which have good prizes inside of them. There's always a condition you have to clear. Now, some of them are fairly simple, like this <gasps> Wait, one. You just have to clear <laughs> six light over the course of several turns. Some are nefarious, like clearing six dark orbs in a horizontal line, oh, while yeah. within three turns, also clearing like ten dark orbs. It's nuts. I got really lucky there. It worked out in my favor without okay. me really having to do much. We've got another one of these awful one-hit okay. KO spinings, so... I've got him targeted, so everything should just blast in his direction as I get started. Normally, damage is distributed in a way that the there system thinks okay. is best or fairest, but you can also use targeting with the L and R button to cycle through okay, each enemy. Kind of and so Sam has been... There you go. Sam's been targeting the spiny, and then, of course, Fire monsters weak to the water, ma orbs being matched. That'll finish off that spiny really quickly. There we go. Which nice. is great, because really, spiny does this one hit move that's just nasty business. At least, um, it is worth mentioning, if he managed to take us out, we could continue. So we don't have to It's a Mario to game, so there the are, there are one ups, and you can find one ups on the courses. Um, and so those, you, if you fail out, you can always continue and pick up the battle right where you left off. Another thing that's kind of cool, I think, in, in this game, if I find items or baddie blocks, I don't even have to finish the course to collect those. If I decide I get to a point where I'm just a little over my head, I want to level up some of my allies before I come back in, I can just head out and take all of my, my gear with me. Yeah, you can just exit a course halfway through and take all the good stuff with going you. Down. So the, the strategy has worked really well to this point with having an Ice Mario and Ice Luigi because they're amplifying the attack stats of all Ice allies and Ice teammates. I mean, I'm sorry, the uh, water teammates. But we're about to find out when we get to the final boss fight um, how Gung Ho sort of messes with people who are really getting overconfident about their teams. Puzzle and Dragons fans <laughs> really know that like, you can really confidently be going through an entire level and you'll hit a final boss that is super tough and will just change the whole way you've been playing. We've been doing well against the fire allies, but... I feel like you may have jinxed me by saying that. It's it's gonna suddenly go terribly, terribly wrong. You're doing super well with these fire monsters. <laughs> no. Oh! Well, See? 
But that's... you were just displaying, uh, oh. you were just showing off how the continues work. That's we're we're going to say I did that on purpose. You did that on purpose. Yes. So, so basically you just use a one-up system. and you can keep on continuing, you get all your health back. Okay, now I really need to deal with that little spiny. He's you can also see as she's making these matches that some of the, some of the teammates have, are at a slightly higher position on the field. And that means their skills are powered up for the use, which is great because we're about to take on the, the final boss, which is pretty awful. See how soon I can get up there. Of course, the more combos you do, the more damage you're doing overall. Um, getting as many combos as you can oh, is a yeah. really kind of crucial thing as well. And now we get to the boss. After right. being just overly See confident with our whole water against fire strategy, <laughs> Gung Ho throws a bunch of wood monsters to, against us at the very end. So water not going to so do much good. And so water is just the worst yeah. thing to, to use against them. But we have skills. We have skills. Where would you like me to start? Um, first of all, we added um, Bullet Billa's team for his awesome guard break. Has the defense of all the foes, so that will help with the water disadvantage. At least Oosh. we'll do we more go. damage because their defense is awful. Uh, what would you like me to put um, Let's try Mega Crush. Uh, what this does is it does damage equal to this teammate's attack to all foes. It just, it's direct damage. It's just a little bit, but every little bit helps when fighting a boss. And it's, good. It's, it's not a huge amount of damage right now, but as he gets stronger and levels up, it's going to get better. Yeah, when he levels so. up, that's going to be a devastating attack. And he's also a dual element, so he does two kinds of damage, which is nice. Right. Uh, we never actually mm -hmm. didn't say that Ice Mario and Ice Luigi are actually both dual elements. Their dominant one is water, but Mario is a fire and Luigi is also a wood element. So they do damage in through a second one I'm as well. I'm thinking I've got some water. Is it time? Red shell? Let's see. Red Koopa Troopa has the skill which is crucial for this final battle. It turns all water, which is relatively uh, useless, and turns them into the most powerful element to strike with. There we go, see how that goes. Ah. Come on, team. Oh, and that's exactly so satisfying. <laughs> oh, that was beautifully done. And that's why the first time I played through this and I got to the boss fight, it's like I didn't realize going into the dungeon that my water strategy was going to fail so much when I got to the boss fight. So I just quit out, took all my items and experience with me, changed the interior of my team a bit, put that um, that a red um, Koopa Troopa right in there so that we could take advantage of that skill. Yeah. Turning all the all the those to fire, and that worked pretty well. And I'm actually going to use Ice Luigi's now because I would like to make sure that that oh, right. light does not hurt me. Ice Luigi's turn. skill is fantastic. It, it yeah, really is useful go. here. It protects you from uh, wood damage for one turn. Because that piranha plant actually has a pretty nasty bite. Let me see if I can actually target. I'm going to see if I can just wipe that piranha plant out of the way before he comes after him. Oh, he actually uh, <gasps> they they dropped a. Oh! Yes, oh, that's so some, close. some good items. All right. So we got a lot of good stuff from that run. Actually, uh, one thing that didn't happen was sometimes randomly as you go through the course, uh, baddies will drop, which means you can oh, add them. Oh, did one. we get one? Yeah, I, didn't, I think early, I early on. Didn't see that. So we got a fire block, which is a baddie block that contains a fire monster. So we have a red, red Koopa, Koopa Troopa we can now use on our team. And then the other goodies we're going to take back and we can show off. And we're going to take a lot of that stuff to the Toad House in a moment. But let's walk... Oh Over yeah, the, the three, next six level, for right? a moment. Yeah. So now that course. last team, which actually did pretty good with the water strategy and then with the little yeah. fire twist at the end, this World 3-6 is a heartless course, which means that no heart orbs appear in the field. And, and you that need team we match. just used probably would get its butt handed to it in this course because it's not handily really customized handed. to this. Handily handed to it. Um, and so you would really need to configure a different team, more of a healer-oriented team, to do well here. So, um, with that being said, let's head to the Toad House. Yeah, so and, always um, think about new teams. It's a teams. really good idea to have everybody ready to go. Every new course, really. Yeah. At least for a big part of the game, you'll always be changing your team to try out different things to try to get past those nefarious bosses. I'm actually going to let you do the Toad House tour. Thank you. Now the Toad House has a number of functions that help you um, basically build your team and your teammates as strong as they can possibly be. The power-up station is a second way that you can give experience to the teammates you're trying to evolve, I mean to, to grow. And so for instance, with that red Koopa Troopa that we had in that last battle, um, who did gain experience from being in battle, we could give him the other red Koopa Troopa that we got. Nice, so I think one Koopa Troopa is gonna surrender his experience surrender and go on a happy vacation, yes. wander away from the battle. One's gonna stick with us, the other one's <laughs> just gonna saunter off into we'll the sunset. And see how this levels up. And so basically he, the one gives his experience to the other. 
Nice. I think he hit level 26 there. And then in the next station, in the transform station, you can also evolve them up. So let's actually pick that same one, the red Koopa Trooper, and see what he evolves to. If you have enough transformation items, the P-Wings in this case, you only need two, you can evolve them into a red Koopa Paratroopa. Or if you have find enough cheap, cheap <laughs> coins, you get the red Koopa Troopa riding on the back of the cheap, cheap. I love that design. Yeah, he's adorable. Actually, can we look at the Goomba too? Because he's yes. got my favorite attack animation in the game. The Goombas are just so good. P-Wings evolve them up to a Paragoomba or the two Goomba Tower. And when they... So much Goomba, I uh, love it. <laughs> a stack of Goomba. And it, it's, it, I think, one of the really fun things for me in this game, since I tend to be a completionist, and if there's like X number of critters to find, I gotta find them you gotta all. Gotta find so them all. Here, I'm gonna need to get a lot of items collected under my belt so I can transform and get every single type. And with 80, or 80 baddies in the game, that's a lot to either capture on the field or to evolve up to ca actually get them all. Yeah. And then f with all the leaders you can get, all the Mario and Luigi's, and the other brother can be the helper, and a lot of other guest stars who can also be helpers on your team. It's just a lot for completionists yeah. to sink their teeth into. But really, I think getting everybody is the only way to make sure that you have all the skills. Because even when you're transforming, you're, you might be getting a new skill just depending on which direction you transform into. So it's really worth exploring all those options. All the options. Uh, another way to get more items to do the transformations is to play the game of chance at the lucky question mark box. Basically you spend coins, 100 coins per pull, to uh, get various items, transform items, and also skill up items. And we will go up to the skill up station in a moment. Uh, if we find Ice Mario, you can see his skill, Ice Ball, itself has a level. It's at level one, which means it powers up in 12 turns. But as you get through the game, these courses get trickier and trickier. You really need those skills to power up faster. So if you level up the skill to level two, it only takes 11 turns to power up. Level it up again, only takes 10 turns and so on. And if you have the right transformation items, Ice Mario needs three star coins to level up his ice ball, then that's how you level up that skill. Every character has different ways of leveling up, skilling up their um, their skills. Yeah, so it's really I, useful when you get into the later ones, because I know some of the later worlds, when you get into folks who are first striking you and just blasting your team down in a couple of moves, you really need your skills to come online as quickly as, as, quickly possible, as possible to be able to pull this off. I think that finishes our mushroom yeah, that's, that's as much as we're allowed Kingdom to say tour. right now. Yeah. So um, uh, if you hang with us, folks, we're going to do a quick switch here and then take you into Puzzle and Dragon Z. So we're back, and uh, we've jumped right into Puzzle and Dragon Z, um, into the land of Dracomacia. And uh, there's a total, this is a game with a full RPG storyline, dozens of characters, a uh, long storyline in which you basically are putting a land back together that has been basically blown apart. Kind of literally to fall into pieces. Your very first day of the job, you show up yeah. and it's grand apocalypse. It's a rough life. It's wonderful. <laughs> um, and in this game, you can play as either the male or female protagonist and uh, you work for the Rangers, which is this organization that basically you know, fights evil and investigates an ancient dragon civilization. And you work for Captain Watari who always is giving you the next mission that sends you back out into the land of Dracomacia as you're putting it back together, piece by piece by piece. Mm. So he says, uh, this is like well into the game, and after all your incredible efforts in the El Dorado area, you can finally reach the Temple of Fire, because that's where we're trying to go, to, re to, to rescue the next Sky Dragon, yes. right? And we want to make sure we show you guys a Sky Dragon, because they look really, really cool. All right, so you work for Captain Watari. He's always giving you your next mission. Your big sidekicks in the game are Nick, who is, I don't know, he's kind-hearted, but he's a little bit dim a lot of the time. He's a little goofy. He's a little goofy. His, his heart's definitely in the right place. I wouldn't take advice from him. I would take advice from Sarah. Sarah. right. Yes. She is a veteran of the Rangers, and she's always got good advice about everything, even how to even play the game very well. Nick gives terrible, terrible advice constantly about how to play the game. <laughs> So I think what we'll do, they're basically saying head back out to the El Dorado area of Dracomacia, and we're just gonna run right through Zed City, which is where the Ranger headquarters is. We'll talk about that a lot later, I think. Later on, after later we get on. some battling done. Uh, looking here at the map, so what we've got here are the areas that we've cleared out. Um, we're fighting against Dogma and his forces of paradox. He's got some elite agents who are out in the world causing trouble, mayhem, doing their best to make sure the world stays broken apart. 
and they've taken over the Sky Dragons, who are these incredibly powerful ancient dragons that maintain order and balance. So what we need to do now is head in, battle a Sky Dragon, and try to take it back and free it from Paradox's control. And unlike um, Super Mario Brothers edition, this one, every time you go into one of these course locations, each one of these has its own level, which are like sub-dungeons for the dungeon. Mm -hmm. And uh, they get harder and harder, more nefarious, as you get towards the top. And we're going after the Sky Dragon. So we'll which go into may that. or may not go well. We'll see. May or um, may not go well. I do want to mention my leader here, though, because I am super proud of him. Uh, I got him from one of the folks in town who collects dragon stones, those little stones that you collect sometimes in the dungeons. And I collected enough of them, showed him my, my set, and he gave me the egg for this dragon, who's a legendary, super cool, and really good skills for this dungeon, so I'm really glad I managed to learn yeah, that one up. Aside from all, we head into of, this. <laughs> all of the dungeons that are part of the main storyline, those subquests are amazing, because they send you back to the dungeons to get special things, and you get great rewards. He's one of my favorite monsters, too. Yeah, and a lot like, of stuff that you won't this get otherwise if you don't help these folks out. So, so let's just dive into it, and um, we'll choose a helper for the backside of this team. Let's see, those two are good. Those, uh, all right, let's, let's just dive right in. Let's give it a go. It's worth mentioning here as we're looking at some of the monsters. In this game, there are over 250 different monsters to collect and evolve into various forms. And they can go into any position of the team, so you don't have to worry about leaders being separate from your allies, being separate from your helper. There's so many different combinations that you can mix and match, and everybody has distinct skills and power-ups and new skills as they evolve. So strategy is huge in this game. Especially when you get to some of the later dungeons, it gets viciously hard, I think, if you it haven't really, does. really gotten used to your team members. But once you're used to the team building aspects of Super Mario Bros. Edition, with 250 monsters in this game, like the teams that you can build in this game are amazing. And unfortunately, Gung Ho's dungeons are that much more <laughs> diabolical in Puzzle and Dragon Z. So the one game is a great place to start with to just get the hang of Puzzle and Dragon Z. But I feel like it makes it so satisfying when you win, though, because it's just like, ah, oh, I oh, worked so hard really? for this. Really? <laughs> like some of these dungeons you go back to again and again and again. And Puzzle and Dragons fans are used to that. So um, we are going to kind of speed up through things here in a minute, just so we can get you to the Sky Dragon. I know we've only got so much time here. But before we do, I wanted to point out that the skill system here is different than what's been in any of the other games in the Puzzle and Dragon series. Uh, looking at the bottom right corner of the upper screen, there's a five over seven right now. I've got uh, five skill points to use, seven that I can collect. Oh, and now up to six. So that red meter in the bottom of the screen is filling up as the battle goes on, as Steven's attacking monsters. Once he hits seven points, that's as many as he can hold at this point. So it pays to use skills now because you can't get any more points until you use up some that you have. So say we take a peek at the skill screen and we can just show off one of those really fast. Let's see, maybe um, Poison Mist? That one's fun, three sure. points. That one is poisoning everybody on the field, so even if we weren't able to do damage to somebody, that's going to be doing damage every turn. And now you can see four out of seven skill points, so we're going to start recharging that meter again. Uh, in this game, I think you use skills a lot more than you do in uh, any of the other games I've played because you, you really want to make sure your meter is constantly refilling. The meter refills every time you're doing damage or taking damage. So yeah, that meter refills a lot, so you're using skills a lot more often in this game. And you have to be kind of economical about it, I think, uh, too, when you have seven points, you're like, okay, I need to heal right now, I really need to guard myself, I really want to do some damage to everybody, and you really have to prioritize, okay, what am I going to do next? Maybe I have to wait until I have a few more skill points to do that next step. Oh, and here's a really vicious treasure chest. Oh my gosh. So, combos, you got two things six. to do. Hang on a second. Yeah, me, me. All right, cleared six dark orbs, and I still have three turns left to clear four more combos. That is not that difficult. I believe in you, Steven. Did I get yes. it? Yes. Did I get it? Oh, I think so. My mathematics could be wrong. Got it. Nice. And so what dropped there is a rune. Oh, which nice. We'll explain later on what the runes are all about. They, you want those? You want to get lots of them? You want those them. so much? So since we're looking at regular gameplay here, what we're going to do is uh, speed things up a little bit. Um, bear with us. We are going to come back uh, with some quick soon. gameplay and show you a Sky Dragon really soon here. All right. All right, so we have battled our way through this dungeon. We are ready to face up against uh, Rivera and the Sky Dragon. Right. And Rivera, I think, is probably one of my favorite of the elites. I think she's just 
really fun. She's a, a very large personality. <laughs> yeah, the elite, uh, the elite forces of the main bad guy in the game, Dogma, Rivera, Jillian, some of the others, they're all just completely ridiculous. And they each have an elemental specialty. And Rivera's is she battles with a lot of fire monsters throughout the game. And here, she has enslaved the sky dragon for her element. And so we've got to take her on. I gotta say, I'm really looking forward to seeing a cosplay for some of these characters, especially Logical 5. If I see a Logical 5 cosplay, I'm gonna be I'm, super jazzed. I'm totally cosplaying as Rivera <laughs> yeah. this this year. Oh my gosh. Here we have the Sky Dragon. So, uh, incredibly powerful fire dragon, and uh, luckily our leader has a skill that's gonna help us out. All right, so this skills, yes, right. Dragon down. That, oh, Rivera, and your mm -hmm. force power up hills. Uh, do we have enough wire, fire on the screen? Mm, we've got five. So all right, let's we can do it. give it a go. All right, Ultra Orb Change Water changes all the wood orbs and heart orbs into water orbs, which is pretty great here at the end of the fight. Nice, but I'm not sure we want to go further than this. Um, Steve and I have been discussing this, and we've decided that we don't want to defeat the Sky Dragon because we don't necessarily want you to see all the good stuff that comes afterwards. It'll kind of spoil some surprises. It's a it's big better spoiler. better to see for yourself. So from here, we are going to- Oh, but I want to. So I much. know, they look so tempting, but we are gonna let the Sky Dragon All relax right. okay. peacefully for another day and back out of the dungeon, but um, it looked like we were in very good shape to finish it off. Oh, yeah. So I'd like to think we could have done it. It's not that we couldn't. Yeah. That we just done choose it. not to today. So let's just back out and go back into Zed City for a tour yes. of Zed City. All and right. there are a lot of really great resources in the city that we want to make sure we show off because it's so much the hub of the game. And as you go through the story, more and more sections of the town are going to open up for you to explore. More and more people are going to be available offering you quests. And there's really a wealth of information here and also a lot of extra features that one really of, enhance the gameplay. Right. In this room, there's a number of features, but one of the most important in here is trading. So Are we going to share our secret about trading today? Is that well, cool? let's just say if you really want all the monsters, okay, that's you better get some trading on. Yes, trading is very advantageous. Crucial to get some <laughs> pretty great monsters for your collection. <laughs> this room is the Dragon Lab. Yes, we have so scientists hard at work figuring out the secrets of the dragons. And a lot of the stuff here is very similar to what uh, we showed off in the Toad House. So we won't go into too much detail, but what we can do here is hatch an egg real fast and show you what that looks like. Uh, unlike in the other game, we can't see who we got right away when we leave a course. We need to come back here and the scientists are gonna hatch our eggs for us. Oh, Wargon! Wargon. He's adorable. So we've got Wargon to add to our team. And uh, we can actually take a look at him in the book real fast. Oh, right. And see Check out what the monster his story guide. is. There you go. So there's Wargon and his basic skill and leader skill. And if we take a look at his details, we can show off his, oh, show off his attack. Aw, little oh, guy. Oh, cute little Wargon. And his evil path. Oh, sound. Okay, nope. now right. his Evo, his Evo path. path. So he's got some work to do. We could take him in a lot of different directions. Um, the brightly lit one here, Wargon, is who we already have. And we've already encountered a couple of his evolutions, so those are filled in for us so we know what those possibilities are. But there's a whole bunch of question marks here, which are monsters we haven't run into yet, and it's only when we encounter those out in the world that we're gonna find out, okay, here's the next option. Or we could just evolve him up and see what happens and find out what the next the, monster is that way. The evolutions in Z are just crazy. Like, compared to Super Mario Brothers, which has evolutions, this one just takes it to the extreme where you know, the only way you can get this top one in the upper upper right is to evolve one guy all the way up three levels and then take him one more branch. Yeah. So and there's looking, a lot of evolving. And looking at this, if I want to get every upper form of Wargon, what I need to do is have four of them and evolve them along those chains right. and then I will have four completely evolved monsters at the end. So that is something I will work on. I, I have a problem with needing to complete Completionist deliciousness <laughs> in this game? Oh my gosh. Uh, this machine here is where we can evolve. Uh, evolving is a little bit different in this game. We're collecting different puzzle pieces and piecing them together. And actually, if we take a look at um, this little fellow up at the top, he's really interesting. We have two different options. Looking at the upper screen, we can see he's got two branches, Dragon Basara and Exahydra. And each of those uses different pieces. So depending on which branch I want to take, I'm going to need multiple pieces. And if we just say, done there, let's take him to the next step we'll see the puzzle that we have to construct. So here are the pieces. We'll slide them over and we can actually see this guy evolve. And I save this, I hope you appreciate it. Like I 
I've been wanting to evolve him for a while, but I saved this for the video. Just so everybody could enjoy it with me. Well, Dragon oh, Visara, cool. this is one of my favorite monsters nice. for the whole thing. Okay, he's, he's gonna be coming into a team soon and I'm doing some work. Uh, last machine we've got in here, uh, similar to in the Toad House, where we were uh, sharing experience from one monster to another, one, one of our baddies to another. Here, we're doing the same thing and using some of our monsters to enhance others. So, say. We'll just there we feed go. the one we've we'll, we'll we'll Give him an egg. Eat. So he's getting a little closer to level 30. The higher they get in levels, the longer it takes, but it is so worth it to, to make them big and burly and stompy. Let's run around town. Sounds good. So we'll head out of here. There's more stuff in HQ, by the way, not those two rooms uh, alone, but we'll leave those for you to explore. But yeah, if you just run around, we'll take a look at what's here. Here's some subquest action. Oh, well, this guy is fun. He's, he's very eccentric, shall we say. But uh, anybody who has an exclamation point over their head has something they need you to find, often multiple things they need you to find. And as you bring them back the things they're looking for, they're gonna hook you up with some really great items, things that you're not gonna find anywhere else. So it's really worth it to explore the town and see who is maybe new, who hasn't asked for a quest before. Oh, and here we can see a, a horrifying chasm oh. where um, there should be a piece of world. That's what happens well, when like, the world gets broken when apart. When all of Draco Macia gets wrecked in the beginning of the game and literally falls apart, Zed City falls apart too. So unfortunately, this part of the city hasn't been restored yet. So you can't get to one of the most interesting things. We have a mad scientist. There's a mad who scientist who, who's supposed to live down that back. road, but you don't see him until later on, and he's pretty great. Um, we might want to take a quick swing by the Coliseum, just show that off, um, and then we'll visit Dad at work. There we go. So right, this is the Coliseum. Uh, it's a great place to go battle, try out new teams. Uh, there's some really challenging fights in here, but you actually get your records on your cards. So when you're showing off what you've been able to accomplish to other players, say via Street Pass, if you do really good in the Coliseum, it is impressive. I am moderately good in the Coliseum. I haven't it's, spent as much It's time really there tricky. As I should. It's for super pro players, that's for sure. And lastly, let's go visit Dad. So. Your dad works at the shrine. I would say that Kokoro behind him is really the the workhorse who does she most of does the actual work. She actually does all the work. He just stands here. there and looks pretty. <laughs> but he does give you allowance, right. which is awesome. So, um, and actually, we were going to talk about runes and relics. We found one. Oh, that's right. We found we one stopped. just sort of randomly in the dungeon. The shrine is the, um, basically it's the gateway to optional dungeons. And so if you find runes, a rune is a one-use ticket to go to these various optional dungeons. Um, and a relic is, you can use it as many times as you want to visit that, that dungeon. And you'll visit, all these dungeons are uh, separate from all the dungeons that are required in the main storyline. And all these dungeons are places to find monsters you won't see anywhere else, evolution pieces you won't find anywhere else. Um, and should we actually just use one to hop right in and we can... Sounds perfect. Yeah, she'll ask you for a rune or relic, which is a one-time ticket or, I've collected or a, a bunch, so feel season free season pass. Use. And what's cool here is you're going to find stuff that you won't find anywhere else. A lot of really powerful monsters, uh, the dragons, Emerald Ruby, those folks, which are really great when you want to skill folks up as well. So we're transport in. She um, teleports you off and away. So while Steven is battling his way through the Shrine Dungeon, uh, unfortunately that's about all the time we have to talk about these games. So to wrap up, uh, the two are coming out on May 22nd. Uh, they're going to be a package together if you buy on the eShop or in stores. So you're getting two really robust game experiences in one go. I think and all in all, between the two games, it's a, it's got to be at least 120 hours of gameplay. And if you're a completionist like us... Yeah, it's going to be longer. I mean, I, I swear <laughs> it's like 200 hours or more. If you really go after all the evolutions, all the monsters, all the optional paths and secrets, it's sort of nuts. Yes, and there, there were definitely a lot of secrets that we weren't allowed to talk to you about today, but please stay tuned. Hopefully we'll get to share more with you later. And please do check out the games. We worked really hard on them, and we think they're really fun. So I uh, hope you enjoyed our video, and uh, I'll catch you next time. See ya.